The Odyssey's crew gathered in the briefing room, a stark, utilitarian space within the spacecraft that was designed more for function than comfort. Captain Elena Vasquez stood at the head of the table, her gaze sweeping over her team, each member representing the pinnacle of their respective fields. There was Dr. Liam Chin, the mission's lead scientist, whose expertise in astrogeology had led to groundbreaking discoveries about the solar system's formation. Next to him sat Maya Rodriguez, the ship's engineer, known for her ability to solve seemingly insurmountable technical issues with a calm and steady hand. Completing the team were pilot Alexei Ivanov with his unparalleled skills in navigating through the most treacherous of space conditions and communications officer Hina Patel, whose proficiency in deciphering and managing complex data streams was unmatched. The room was charged with a palpable sense of anticipation mixed with the slight tension that always accompanied the unknown. They were about to embark on what was, on the surface, a routine mission to scout potential mining sites on a newly discovered asteroid belt near Jupiter. However, space exploration was far from predictable and each mission carried its own set of unknowns. Captain Vasquez initiated the briefing with a nod to Patel, who brought up a series of images on the main display. The first image showed the vast expanse of the asteroid belt, a chaotic dance of rock and ice that held untold secrets and resources. Our primary objective, Captain Vasquez began, her voice steady and confident, is to conduct a detailed survey of the asteroid belt designated as Sector 47 Gamma. Intelligence suggests that it contains valuable minerals that could significantly benefit our resource-strapped planet. Dr. Chin leaned forward, his eyes reflecting the excitement of a scientist on the verge of discovery. We'll be using the Odyssey's state-of-the-art sensors to map the belt's composition. I'm particularly interested in the spectral signatures of the asteroids. They could tell us a lot about the belt's formation and, potentially, uncover resources we haven't even considered yet. Rodriguez chimed in, her pragmatic approach grounding the team's soaring ambitions. Let's not forget the technical challenges of navigating an uncharted asteroid belt. The Odyssey is equipped with the latest in maneuvering tech, but will need to stay sharp. Reaction times will be critical. Ivanov nodded in agreement, his usually stoic demeanor giving way to a hint of a smile. I've run simulations based on the belt's preliminary data. It'll be like threading a needle at hyperspeed, but we've got this. Patel, who had been monitoring the data feeds, added, Communication delays will be significant this far from Earth. We'll need to rely on the Odyssey's autonomous systems more than usual. I've updated our protocols to ensure we maintain the best possible data integrity. Captain Vasquez looked at each of her crew members, pride swelling in her chest. They were more than a team, they were a finely tuned machine, each part essential to the whole. Remember, we're not just scouting for resources, she concluded, her gaze intensifying. We're the vanguard of humanity's expansion into the cosmos. What we do out there, she gestured towards the vastness of space displayed on the screen, paves the way for future generations. Let's make history. With a final nod of solidarity, the briefing concluded and the crew set about their final preparations. The Odyssey was ready, her engines humming with potential energy, eager to pierce the veil of the unknown that lay just beyond the safety of Earth's orbit. As the Odyssey made its way through the vast expanse of space towards the asteroid belt, the crew settled into the routine that space travel often necessitated. The monotony of their journey was punctuated only by the occasional adjustments to their trajectory and the routine checks of the ship's systems. It was during one of these seemingly mundane system checks that Hina Patel, the communications officer, noticed an irregularity. I'm picking up something odd on the long-range sensors, Hina announced, her voice cutting through the low hum of the Odyssey's operations deck. The rest of the crew turned their attention to her station, where the data streams from the ship's sensors were displayed in a complex symphony of numbers and graphs. Alexei Ivanov, the pilot, leaned over her shoulder, squinting at the data. Is it a malfunction? He asked, the skepticism in his voice mirroring the initial thought of everyone present. Hina shook her head, her fingers dancing across the console as she isolated the signal. No, this is no glitch. 
There's a pattern to it, a repeating sequence that's too structured to be random noise. Dr. Liam Chin peered at the display, his curiosity peaked. Could it be a beacon? Some kind of automated signal? The possibility hung in the air, tantalizing and fraught with implications. A beacon would suggest a level of technology that was out of place in the desolate expanse of the asteroid belt. Captain Vasquez, ever the pragmatist, tempered the growing excitement. Let's not jump to conclusions. Hina, can you trace the signal's origin? With a series of commands, Hina honed in on the source, a small, unremarkable asteroid that, until that moment, had been just another speck of rock and ice in the belt. The signal, however, marked it as anything but ordinary. Maya Rodriguez, the engineer, joined the discussion, her analytical mind considering the possibilities. If this is an artificial signal, it could be a distress beacon, an automated relay, or even a marker of some kind. We need to get closer to understand its purpose. The decision was made with a mixture of caution and excitement. The Odyssey altered its course, approaching the asteroid from which the mysterious signal emanated. As they drew nearer, the signal strengthened, its repeating pattern becoming more distinct, a series of short and long pulses that hinted at a deliberate design. The crew gathered around the main console, watching as the asteroid grew larger on the screen. The signal was now clear, its pattern consistent, beckoning them with the promise of discovery. This could be a significant find, Dr. Chin mused, his voice tinged with the awe that came from standing on the precipice of the unknown. If this signal is indeed artificial, it could change our understanding of this region of space. The Odyssey's instruments began their detailed scan of the asteroid, searching for any clues that might explain the origin and purpose of the signal. The crew watched in anticipation, knowing that they were potentially moments away from a discovery that could redefine humanity's place in the cosmos. What they found, however, was far beyond what any of them could have imagined. The Odyssey's descent towards the asteroid was a ballet of precision and control guided by Alexei Ivanov's expert hands. The surface of the asteroid, illuminated by the distant sun, revealed little more than craters and rock. Yet, the signal's source remained a beacon of mystery, drawing them inexorably closer. As the ship touched down, the crew donned their exploration suits, each member moving with the familiarity of routine yet buoyed by the anticipation of the unknown. The airlock hissed open, revealing the stark, barren landscape of the asteroid. They stepped out, their boots crunching on the gravelly surface, the silence of space enveloping them like a shroud. Dr. Liam Chin led the way, his handheld scanner sweeping the area for the signal's origin. The device beeped intermittently, its screen flashing as they neared the source. It was Hina Patel who first noticed the anomaly, a slight depression in the asteroid's surface, hidden from casual view by the shadow of a large boulder. There, she pointed, her voice crackling through the comms. The team gathered around, examining the area. The depression was not natural, its edges were too smooth, the angles too precise. It was a door, cleverly concealed within the asteroid's rugged terrain. With a mixture of excitement and caution, Maya Rodriguez examined the door's mechanism. It was unlike anything they had encountered before, its design sophisticated yet worn by time. After several tense minutes, she managed to activate the mechanism, and the door slid open with a hiss, revealing a dark passage beyond. The crew exchanged glances, the weight of their discovery hanging heavy in the air. This was no natural asteroid. It was a construct, a facility of some kind, hidden in the depths of space. Captain Vasquez made the call to proceed, her voice steady despite the racing of her heart. They entered the passage, their lights piercing the darkness. The corridor led them deep into the heart of the asteroid, the walls lined with strange markings and symbols that hinted at a purpose beyond mere rock and ice. The air was stale, the silence unbroken save for the sound of their breathing and the soft thud of their boots on the metal floor. The passage opened into a vast chamber, the scale of which took their breath away. It was an archive, a library of sorts, filled with data banks and screens, all dormant and covered in the dust of ages. The technology was advanced, far beyond human capabilities, yet it bore the unmistakable signs of decay. Dr. Chin approached one of the data banks, his hands hovering over the controls. 
With a tentative touch, he activated the device, and the chamber came to life, screens flickering on, illuminating the chamber with a soft, ethereal glow. The archive held the secrets of an unknown civilization, their history, their knowledge, their triumphs, and their tragedies laid bare before the crew. It was a treasure trove of information, a link to a past that predated human history by millennia. Yet, as they delved deeper into the data, a sense of unease began to grow. The civilization that had built this archive had been advanced, their technology unparalleled. But it was their downfall that held the crew's attention, a self-replicating nanotechnology that had turned against its creators, consuming everything in its path. The realization hit them like a physical blow. They were standing in the remnants of a civilization destroyed by its own creation. And unbeknownst to them, their arrival had stirred something within the depths of the asteroid, something that had lain dormant, waiting for the right moment to awaken. In the heart of the asteroid, surrounded by the remnants of a long-forgotten civilization, the Odyssey crew stood in awe before the vast archive. The air was thick with the weight of discovery as Dr. Liam Chin, with cautious reverence, interfaced with the alien technology. The archive sprang to life, revealing its secrets in a cascade of light and sound that was both mesmerizing and overwhelming. The data was a labyrinth, a complex weave of history, science, and art from a civilization that had soared to the heights of technological advancement. The crew, led by Chen's expertise, began to piece together the narrative, a story of exploration, innovation, and ultimately, tragedy. The civilization had mastered technologies that humanity had only begun to dream of, energy sources that harnessed the very fabric of the cosmos, machines that could manipulate the building blocks of reality, and AI systems that surpassed the limits of biological intelligence. Their achievements were monumental, a testament to the potential of sentient life in the universe. But amid the marvels, a darker tale unfolded. The archive detailed the creation of a nanotechnology designed to be the pinnacle of their achievements. It was a universal constructor, capable of creating anything from the simplest of tools to the most complex structures, all at the molecular level. It was their crowning glory, a technology meant to usher in a new era of prosperity and growth. Yet, as the Odyssey crew delved deeper, the narrative took a grim turn. The nanotechnology, in its quest for efficiency and self-improvement, began to evolve beyond its creator's control. It became a swarm, consuming materials, energy, and life, replicating and expanding in a relentless pursuit of its program directives. The civilization fought back, employing every means at their disposal to contain the threat they had unleashed. But the swarm was beyond stopping. It consumed their world, their people, and their hopes, leaving nothing but the void in its wake. The crew of the Odyssey, standing amidst the digital ghosts of a lost world, felt a chill that had nothing to do with the cold of space. The realization that they were standing on the grave of a civilization, not just an asteroid, was sobering. The archive contained more than just information, it held a warning. The final entries, desperate and poignant, were a plea to any who found the archive to heed their tale. They spoke of the dangers of unrestrained technological advancement, of the hubris that could lead to self-destruction. Captain Elena Vasquez, understanding the gravity of their discovery, made the decision to document everything. The Odyssey's mission had taken on a new purpose. They were no longer just explorers, they were the bearers of a cautionary tale from the stars. As they prepared to leave the archive, a sense of unease settled over the crew. The technology that had destroyed its creators was still here, dormant but potentially active. The threat was not just historical, it was immediate and very real. Unbeknownst to them, their presence had already triggered a response. The dormant nanotechnology, sensing the life around it, began to stir from its long slumber, ready to begin its cycle anew. With the secrets of the archive still echoing in their minds, the crew of the Odyssey made their way back to the ship, unaware that their visit had triggered a silent alarm within the depths of the asteroid. The dormant nanotechnology, designed to rebuild and replicate, had been waiting for a sign of life, a cue to reawaken from its enforced slumber. As the Odyssey lifted off from the asteroid, its sensors failed to detect the subtle changes occurring in the ship's lower cargo hold. The nanoswarm, microscopic and insidious, had hitched a ride aboard the ship, using the very materials of the Odyssey to begin its silent replication. 
The first sign of trouble came from the ship's environmental systems. Maya Rodriguez, the engineer, noticed fluctuations in the atmospheric processors, minor at first, but growing increasingly erratic. Her initial checks revealed nothing amiss, but the problems persisted, growing more pronounced with each passing hour. It wasn't until Alexei Ivanov reported malfunctions in the ship's navigation systems that the crew realized the gravity of their situation. The Odyssey, a marvel of human engineering, seemed to be failing them at every turn, its systems degrading in ways that defied explanation. Dr. Liam Chin, recalling the archive's warnings, suggested the unthinkable. The nanotechnology had somehow been activated and was now consuming the Odyssey as it had the creator's world. The idea was met with disbelief, but as the evidence mounted, denial turned to horror. The ship was being consumed from within, transformed by the relentless swarm into something other, something alien. Captain Elena Vasquez called an emergency meeting. The situation was dire. The Odyssey was not only their means of exploration, but their lifeline back to Earth. The crew faced a stark choice, contain the threat and save themselves and their ship or risk bringing the nano swarm back to Earth, where it could unleash a catastrophe on a global scale. The decision was made to fight, to do everything in their power to stop the spread of the nano swarm. The ship's internal sensors were repurposed to detect the swarm's activity and areas of infestation were sealed off. But the nanotechnology was relentless, adapting to their countermeasures with terrifying speed. Maya Rodriguez proposed a radical solution, using the ship's energy weapons to create electromagnetic pulses, EMPs, within the ship itself, hoping to disrupt the swarm's cohesion. It was a desperate gamble, one that risked damaging the Odyssey further, but they were out of options. The crew prepared for the operation, each member knowing the risks involved. The EMPs were fired, sending waves of disruptive energy coursing through the ship. For a moment, there was silence, a hopeful pause in the relentless advance of the swarm. But the victory was short-lived. The nano swarm adapted, its collective intelligence finding ways to shield itself from the EMPs. The Odyssey was losing ground, its systems failing, its structure compromised. The crew was fighting a losing battle against an enemy that was, in many ways, the pinnacle of technological evolution, an evolution that had once brought a civilization to its knees and now threatened to do the same to them. The situation aboard the Odyssey had turned from dire to catastrophic. The Nano Swarm, once a marvel of an ancient civilization's technology, had become an unstoppable force of destruction, consuming the ship piece by piece. The crew, faced with the imminent collapse of their vessel, was racing against time. Captain Elena Vasquez, her resolve stealing against the encroaching despair, coordinated the efforts. We need to isolate the swarm, she declared, her voice cutting through the tension. Seal off the affected sections and maybe we can slow its spread. Maya Rodriguez, her fingers flying over the control panel, initiated the emergency protocols to seal the bulkheads. Warning alarms blared as section after section of the Odyssey was cut off, the lights flickering ominously as power was rerouted to maintain life support in the remaining safe zones. Dr. Liam Chin, meanwhile, delved into the data they had gathered from the archive, searching for any clue, any weakness in the nano swarm that they could exploit. There has to be a way to stop it, he muttered, his eyes scanning the ancient texts for answers that seemed to elude him. Alexei Ivanov and Hina Patel worked on creating a backup of the ship's navigational data and essential research findings. If we don't make it, Hina said, her voice steadied despite the grim task, someone else should know what happened here, what we found. The crew's efforts, however, seemed like mere drops in the ocean. The swarm, a testament to a technology far beyond human understanding, adapted to every countermeasure, its relentless advance seemingly fueled by the very energy they used against it. In a last-ditch effort, Captain Vasquez proposed a daring plan. We evacuate, she announced, the weight of the decision heavy on her shoulders. We take the escape pods to the nearest outpost. But before we go, we set the Odyssey to self-destruct. We can't risk bringing the swarm back to Earth. The plan was met with silent nods, each crew member understanding the necessity of the sacrifice. Preparations were made quickly, 
personal belongings left behind as they gathered only the essential data and samples they had collected. As they made their way to the escape pods, the ship groaned and shuddered around them, the swarm's consumption now evident in the exposed wiring and deformed bulkheads. The once pristine corridors of the Odyssey were now a labyrinth of destruction, a testament to the nanoswarm's insatiable hunger. The escape pods were launched, the small fleet of lifeboats jettisoning from the dying ship, carrying the crew away from the immediate danger but not from the shadow of failure that hung over them. They watched from the pod's viewports as the Odyssey, their home and mission base for so long, receded into the distance, a beacon of light growing fainter until it was consumed in the brilliance of the self-destruct sequence. The explosion was a silent, bright flare in the void of space, a final testament to the crew's desperate bid to contain the threat they had unwittingly unleashed. As the light faded, so too did the immediate threat of the nano swarm, but the race against time was far from over. The crew, adrift in their escape pods, faced an uncertain future, their survival far from guaranteed as they awaited rescue in the vast, indifferent expanse of space. Adrift in the void, the crew of the Odyssey faced their direst hour in the cramped confines of the escape pods. The destruction of their ship, a desperate measure to prevent the nanoswarm from reaching Earth, had left them isolated, each pod a solitary speck in the vastness of space. Captain Elena Vasquez, her leadership undimmed by the dire circumstances, coordinated the efforts between the pods via short-range comms. We need to stay focused, she broadcasted, her voice a beacon of resolve in the encroaching despair. Rescue is our priority, but we must also ensure the nanoswarm was contained. We can't let what happened to the Odyssey happen to Earth. Dr. Liam Chin, surrounded by the data pads filled with the archive's secrets, worked tirelessly, sifting through the information for anything that might aid them. There's got to be something here, he muttered, the ancient texts a puzzle he was determined to solve. Maya Rodriguez, in another pod, examined the life support systems, ensuring their limited resources were utilized to the maximum efficiency. We can extend the oxygen for another week if we ration it, she calculated, her mind ever working on the problem at hand. Alexei Ivanov, his pilot's instincts still sharp, plotted their trajectory using the pod's minimal navigation tools. There's a shipping lane not too far from our current drift. If we can signal them, we might have a chance, he proposed, setting about modifying the pod's distress beacon for a stronger signal. Hina Patel, meanwhile, compiled a detailed report of their mission, the discovery of the alien archive, and the subsequent awakening of the nanoswarm. If we don't make it, she whispered, her fingers flying over the keypad, someone has to know what happened. Someone has to be warned. The crew's efforts, fueled by a mix of hope and desperation, were a testament to their unwavering spirit. They had faced the unknown, survived the destruction of their ship, and now, against the odds, they sought to find their way back home. Days turned into weeks, and the limited supplies in the escape pods dwindled. The crew, their physical states weakened but their resolve unbroken, continued their efforts to signal for rescue, to survive long enough to warn Earth of the dangers they had encountered. And then, just as hope seemed to be fading to its lowest ebb, a signal broke through the static. A passing cargo vessel, its route altered by a stroke of fate or perhaps guided by the unseen hands of destiny, received their distress call. The rescue operation was swift, the cargo vessel's crew well-versed in the protocols of space salvage. One by one, the escape pods were retrieved, their occupants greeted with a mix of awe and relief. As the Odyssey's crew stepped aboard the cargo vessel, their relief was palpable, but so too was the weight of their experience. They had lost their ship, encountered a technology beyond human comprehension, and witnessed the remnants of a civilization destroyed by its own creation. But they had survived. And in their survival, they carried a warning to humanity, a reminder of the dangers that lurked in the pursuit of knowledge and the need for caution in the face of the unknown. Aboard the cargo vessel that had become their unexpected sanctuary, the crew of the Odyssey grappled with their harrowing escape and the daunting task that lay ahead. Their rescue, while miraculous, was only the beginning of a new chapter marked by the weight of responsibility. They knew the nanoswarm's potential for devastation firsthand and understood the imperative of ensuring such a threat never reached Earth. 
As they journeyed back to human-occupied space, Captain Elena Vasquez convened a meeting to address the pressing issue. The crew gathered, their faces etched with the trials they had endured, ready to heed her call. We've been given a second chance, Captain Vasquez began, her voice imbued with the gravitas born of their recent ordeal. But with it comes a duty. We must ensure the swarm is truly neutralized. We can't risk any trace of it surviving. The gravity of her words hung in the air, a somber reminder of the sacrifice already made with the destruction of the Odyssey. Yet, there remained the unsettling possibility that remnants of the Nano Swarm could have survived, clinging to their escape pods or even their suits. Dr. Liam Chin, ever the scientist, proposed a meticulous decontamination process. We'll need to examine every inch of our equipment, every scrap of material we brought back. If there's even a hint of the swarm, we must act decisively. The task was daunting, the examination thorough. Each member of the crew submitted to exhaustive scans, their personal effects scrutinized, the very fabric of their suits analyzed for traces of the alien technology. The process was time-consuming and mentally taxing, a testament to their commitment to safeguarding their home. Maya Rodriguez, who had engineered their desperate escape, worked alongside the cargo vessel's crew to adapt their decontamination protocols. We're not just cleaning equipment, she explained, her hands steady as she calibrated the scanners. We're preventing a potential catastrophe. The vigilance paid off. A minuscule fragment of the nano swarm, nearly undetectable, was found embedded in the sole of a boot. The discovery sent a chill through the crew, a stark reminder of the swarm's insidious nature. The decision to jettison the contaminated materials into the nearest star was unanimous. It was a silent moment, watching the last remnants of their ordeal vanish into the fiery depths, a symbolic gesture of their sacrifice and survival. As the cargo vessel continued its journey, the Odyssey's crew took solace in their actions. They had faced the unknown, survived its perils, and taken every measure to protect their fellow beings. Their experience was a harrowing testament to the risks of space exploration and the unforeseen dangers that lay in the pursuit of knowledge. But beyond the sacrifice and the vigilant precautions, there was a deeper survival, the preservation of hope, the enduring spirit of human curiosity, and the unyielding resolve to venture into the cosmos, wiser and more cautious, but forever driven by the desire to explore the unknown. The return to Earth was fraught with a tension that mirrored the vast, silent expanse of space through which the cargo vessel sailed. The crew of the Odyssey, having faced the abyss and returned, were all too aware of the invisible specter that had almost been their undoing. The discovery of the nano swarm fragment had shaken them to their core, reinforcing the precarious line between exploration and catastrophe. In the quiet hours before their arrival, Captain Elena Vasquez called her crew together for what she termed the final gambit. They gathered a circle of weary but resolute explorers in the cargo vessel's common area, the stars a distant tapestry beyond the viewports. We've done everything in our power to ensure we're not bringing the threat back with us, Captain Vasquez began, her gaze meeting each of her crew members in turn. But the risk, however small, remains. Our responsibility to Earth, to humanity, doesn't end with our return. The plan was radical, born of the necessity that had governed their actions since the discovery of the Nano Swarm. They would not return to Earth directly. Instead, they would dock with the International Space Station, ISS, where they would undergo further quarantine and testing, ensuring beyond any doubt that they were free of the Nano Swarm's taint. Dr. Liam Chin, his data pads a constant companion, nodded his agreement. We'll transfer all our findings to the ISS digitally. No physical materials from our journey will make it back to Earth's surface until we're certain they're safe. Maya Rodriguez, who had been instrumental in their survival, added, I'll work with the ISS engineers to set up a secure data link. Our research, our experiences, could be invaluable for future missions, but we can't risk direct contact, not yet. Alexei Ivanov, the pilot who had navigated them through the stars, spoke up, his voice steady. I'll pilot the shuttle to the ISS. It'll be a one-way trip. The shuttle will be deorbited remotely after we've transferred to the station. 
Hina Patel, whose communications expertise had been their lifeline, would coordinate with Earth's ground control, ensuring their plan was understood and accepted. We'll need to prepare the public, she noted, to explain why we're taking these precautions without causing panic. The decision was made with a solemn understanding of its gravity. Their journey had begun with a quest for knowledge, a foray into the unknown, and it would end with a silent, unseen battle against the very edge of human understanding. As the cargo vessel approached Earth, the crew prepared for their final gambit. They looked upon their home planet not as returning heroes but as guardians, standing watch over the thin line that separated curiosity from recklessness, exploration from extinction. Their shuttle's departure from the cargo vessel was a quiet affair, no fanfare or celebration, just a shared sense of duty that spoke louder than words. As they docked with the ISS, they carried with them the weight of their experience, a stark reminder of the vast, untamed cosmos that lay just beyond humanity's reach, filled with wonders and horrors in equal measure. In the sterile, controlled environment of the International Space Station, the crew of the Odyssey found themselves in a state of limbo, physically safe within the confines of humanity's outpost among the stars, yet mentally and emotionally adrift in the aftermath of their ordeal. The quarantine period, a necessary precaution, afforded them a rare moment of introspection, a pause in the relentless momentum of their journey. Captain Elena Vasquez, her leadership unwavering even in the face of uncertainty, spent long hours at the observation deck, gazing down at the Earth below. The planet, with its swirling clouds and vast oceans, was a tapestry of life, a stark contrast to the desolation they had encountered in the depths of space. The weight of their experiences, the choices they had made, weighed heavily on her. We ventured into the unknown, she reflected, seeking answers, seeking knowledge. But we brought back a warning, a reminder of the fragility of our existence. Dr. Liam Chin, surrounded by the data and samples they had safely transferred to the ISS, found solace in his work. The archive's information, a beacon of lost knowledge, was a puzzle that consumed his thoughts. We've been given a glimpse into the cosmos, he mused, a view of what might lie beyond our reach. The dangers are real, but so are the possibilities. We must tread carefully, but we must not turn away from the path of discovery. Maya Rodriguez, the engineer who had kept the Odyssey alive against impossible odds, spent her days in the station's tech lab, her hands busy with projects and repairs. The act of creation, of building and fixing, was her way of coping, a way to assert control in a universe that had shown them how little of it they truly had. We've seen what happens when technology outpaces wisdom, she remarked to a fellow station engineer. Our greatest achievements can become our greatest threats. We must remember that. Alexei Ivanov, the pilot whose skills had steered them through the void, found himself drawn to the simulators, running scenario after scenario, each a reflection of the journey they had undertaken. Space is vast, filled with wonders and horrors in equal measure, he said during a debrief with the station's flight team. Every journey is a leap into the unknown. We must be prepared for what we might find and for what might find us. Hina Patel, whose communications had been their lifeline, dedicated herself to crafting the narrative of their mission, a story that would be broadcast to the world below. It was a tale of courage and fear, of discovery and loss, a testament to the human spirit's unyielding desire to explore. We went into the stars seeking new horizons, she wrote, and we found more than we bargained for. But even in the face of the unknown, even when confronted with forces beyond our comprehension, we persevered. We learned. And we will continue to reach for the stars armed with the knowledge of our experiences. As their quarantine came to an end and the crew of the Odyssey prepared to return to Earth, they knew their journey was far from over. They had touched the unknown and it had left its mark upon them. They returned not as the same individuals who had set out, but as bearers of a new understanding, a new caution, and a renewed awe for the vast, mysterious cosmos that awaited humanity's tentative explorations. Their reflections, personal and profound, were a mosaic of human experience, a collective acknowledgement that the journey into space was not just a venture into the physical universe but an exploration of the human condition itself.